This is Dante Diamici reporting from the meth lab. So obviously, if there's a problem with the lake, it's a big problem for the county. Right now, the lake's biggest problem is those funky creatures that periodically make the water and the surrounding air smell like a very scary restroom. These party poopers go by the name cyanobacteria. They aren't algae. Algae smells better even when it's dead than dead cyanobacteria which doesn't smell until it dies and floats to the surface and rots. You see, it's all one big biochemistry cycle. If the sea bees didn't bloom out of control, they wouldn't have mass die-offs and stink the place up. This smell of death is a deal killer for tourists and producers who want to film cheap B-movies here. But back to the cycle. It's not some science experiment that got a little manic depressive. It's the nutrients, stupid. Too many trips through the all-you-can-eat aquatic salad bar of wine on the vine, burgers on the hoof, and leaky septic tank nitrogen. But the secret ingredients in this super sauce are the minerals. Number one in this hit parade is not the number two. It is the phosphorus. Water washes the minerals into the lake with a little help from the wind. When it's just a few minerals passing through, we don't get this boom and bust stink bomb. But when the minerals pour in, especially the phosphorus, the lake goes on crank for a while, then has an aneurysm. Why are there so many loose minerals washing off the hills? In a word, grading. Not terrorists, not the will of God, not gay marriage, just grading. Everything else is a minor factor or a convenient scapegoat. Ah, I see a hand up. What's grading? That's where you tear off the ground surface for buildings or roads. It's worse on hills when excavating construction methods are used. So what's the solution? No more building on hillsides? No he can still build and not have to change the name to Slime Lake. But we do have to start building for the hills and the lake and not mainly for real estate developers and spec builders. On slopes, this means smaller houses using post footings, pilings, or natural rock buildups. This means 
No more new survey developments on straight right-of-ways that become straight dirt roads on steep slopes. New developments must work with government to resurvey the right-of-ways as curved, paved roads with adequate French drains. This means for all old paper subdivisions on slopes, new building permits should require a road assessment district for that area to control runoff or a homeowners association that will turn through non-arterial right-of-ways into common areas for the middle of the block with parking lots on each end of the street. These measures will greatly help the lake. Still, too many minerals will be injected into Cyanoville. Fortunately, nature has a solution, or had a solution, until shoreline developers and their political stooges fixed it, and fixed it good. For thousands of years, tulies have been filtering minerals from the lake's inflows. But shoreline property owners thought the tulies were weeds and made their businesses look, well, messy. So they tore them out with county government's tacit consent. Shore properties seem to attract ignorant, narrow-minded investors because most new owners don't want the Thule's back on their turf either. Not in my backyard, no way. We devastated the lakefront with government approval, which means government can only mandate some changes by either holding new developments hostage or paying off the old developments with taxpayer money. The other way, the sensible way, that the lake can get its two league kidneys back is for lakefront owners to create a Thule planting and maintenance assessment district around the lake. After all, they're the ones who will benefit the most from mineral control and a functioning lake ecosystem. The reason county and city governments cannot reverse the damage by simply paying to replant the tulies is because most lakefront owners still perceive them as reducing the real estate value of their property. Government would have to pay the new owners the difference to make the lake desirable again. The difference is what those properties gained when they created the filter problem by ripping out the Thule's. This is the main reason that the fixers want a sales tax to fix the lake, to pay off the pigs who trashed it to begin with. The fixers know that old attitudes have not changed.
around here, even though most of the faces are different. Real estate has not repented. It is the little people who should pay for their greed and arrogance. I say, no way. I say, hell no way.